action. In volleyball, it's France and Japan facing off for the bronze. And out at the Olympic Sports Complex, the finals in boxing. All of that on day 15 of the Goodwill Games. You fell out of a clear blue sky. The darkness below. And Network Television proudly presents the 1986 Goodwill Games from Moscow and from Madrid. For the 1986 Goodwill Games from Moscow, Bob Neal. Welcome to our final weekend of coverage of the 1986 Goodwill Games. This is day 15 here in Moscow, and the Goodwill Games are ending this weekend in a flurry of activity, Nick Charles. Final weekend of competition finally has arrived, Bob. You're right, and the accent this afternoon rests heavily with the Soviet Union. From the inspiring, imposing women who have totally controlled the gymnastics to the quality and quantity of the Soviet boxers who fight tonight for a gold medal. But there's more. We'll leave Moscow twice during our afternoon coverage. We'll go to Spain for the bronze medal game in the World Basketball Championships. It's the high-flying, hot-shooting Brazilians against the Yugoslavians who have a couple of players of their own capable of breaking the game open. And later in the afternoon, we'll leave the Russian Republic and take you to the Republic of Estonia for yachting off the capital city of Tallinn in the Gulf of Finland. So our coverage today figures to be vast and varied as the Goodwill Games continue this weekend. Bob? And in gymnastics, we're going to be going to the venue live in just a moment. It's the final event, one of the most entertaining in my opinion. It's the Women's Individual Apparatus Competition. We'll be going out to the indoor stadium live in just a moment. Stay with us. We'll get started with our final weekend of coverage of the Goodwill Games. Well, we were all aware that the Soviet gymnasts were good. We started to become even more acutely aware when the men dominated that gymnastics competition. Then the women began a couple of days ago, and it has been Soviet women. One, two, three in virtually all of the events, and the depth goes on even beyond that. We're going now to a very entertaining event, the Women's Gymnastics Individual Apparatus Competition. We're going to the indoor stadium, and there you hear, hear our commentators, Charlie Neal, Bart Connor, and Kathy Johnson. Welcome to the Olympic Sports Complex. It's our final day of coverage in women's gymnastics competition. Today we have the individual apparatus finals in which the top eight gymnasts on each apparatus from the team competition will compete for the individual apparatus goal. And Kathy Johnson, this promises to be a very, very exciting day. We are in for an incredible competition. In fact, all the top performers in every event are coming in with nine nines or better. So it's going to take near perfection to take a medal. The Soviets will be the standouts again, but there are some highlights from some of the other countries. So it will be a well-rounded competition. Okay, Bart Connor, as far as the United States is concerned, we could very well walk away with a medal today. Well, we have some high hopes, I'll tell you. We have three competitors from the U.S. competing here. Angie Dankins, Hope Spivey, and Joyce Wilburn. Now, our biggest hopes, of course, lie with Joyce Wilburn because in floor and in vaulting, she's in the finals with a 9-8 in floor and a 9-9 in vaulting. And if she puts together a couple of vaults, she could be the first medal winner for the United States. In fact, she could be the first medal winner from any country from the Western world. It's the individual apparatus finals. And you're looking at the warm-ups for the vault, the first event in our apparatus finals. And we talk about uh, a little bit in the opening about the top scores. It's kind of ironic, the draw kind of odd that the high scores in all the events, Kathy and Bart, are either leading off or in second place. Tell you what, that can be an advantage and a disadvantage. It's sometimes good to go first, get it over with, and just apply the pressure to those after you. But also, sometimes with the judging, the scores tend to go higher and they wait till those last girls go up. This is Still in the warm-up. Yeah. 
Now, the first young lady that we're going to see, that was the Soviet that you saw warming up right there. But the Joyce Wilborn of the United States, she finished with the second highest score in the team competition. She came away with a 9-9-0. You're looking at her right now. She's 15 years of age from Patterson, New Jersey. Attends John F. Kennedy School there, trains at the North Stars Gymnastics Academy. What they will do with the women's score is each lady will take two vaults, and they'll average out the scores of the two vaults, add them to the preliminary score. That'll come up with a final score. And we talked about high hopes. Joyce is the first competitor. We talked about the advantages and the disadvantages of, of, advantages of being in that position. We're going to know right here. She's got to do two vaults, and she's got to stick them if she hopes to get a medal here. Joyce Wilborn. First vault will be a layout with a full twist. Oh, a layout to the oh, home. Oh. And she stuck the landing perfectly. She changed her strategy because I talked to the coaches before and she was going to do the full twist first and then the layout. That's actually the weaker of her two vaults, but she does it so magnificent. Look at the height and a great landing. As we mentioned earlier, she had a 9-9 in the team competition. The field in this eight-member vault field, there were two 9-9s and a 9-9-5. And actually, Charlie, the rest of the six competitors are basically out of the competition because it's very hard to make up a couple of tens of points here in the event finals. Joyce is going to do her second vault, which will be the same vault that we just saw with a full twist. It's that much harder. Well, these are the scores from her first vault which is about a 9-8 average, and they'll take this score, add it to her second vault score, and then average the two scores. You know, all week long we've been seeing four judges, but in the final, final competition they're using six judges per event. 9-7-5, 9-7-7-5, rather, is the score for Joyce Wilborn on her first vault. Now this is the crucial vault. Much more difficult. And as you said earlier, Bart, the key to winning a medical medal here is going to be sticking the landing. She Second vault for Joyce Wilborn. She can do this vault better than anyone else in the world if she can just stick. Oh! She step on the end. She was picture perfect until the landing. It was a gorgeous vault. Great height. The most impressive part of, about it was the distance from the horse. In fact, she looked a couple of feet farther than she actually did in the preliminary competition. The step will probably cost her a tenth of a point. But still a very fine effort. And it was a good chance for her to pick up at least a, a silver medal, possibly even a gold, depending on some of the uh, other contestants who are following her, like Shevchenko, who's next. And look, not bad second score either. They'll average the two. 9.775, I believe. So, looks similar to her first score right there. Six judges again. You drop the high and the low, and you average the four in the middle. And, of course, it looks like to me the average there. Oh, one of the scores came up. Well, still, I think it'll be a 9.8 average. We're enjoying the competition here. We've enjoyed it for the last three three days. The women have just been fantastic. As we look at Joyce Wilborn, she's awaiting her score. And there's Don Peters, her coach, the coach of the American team at this competition. He's adding up the points as well. 9-8-0 for her second score. So her average will be 9-7-8-8 for Joyce Wilborn. As we look at... Shevchenko of the okay, Soviet she, Union, she, Yelena Shevchenko, 9-9 in the preliminary. And she is a dynamite gymnast, very new on the Soviet team. She performs a double twisting suit. Now, I'll be interested to see if she does it first. Yelena Shevchenko, Soviet Union. She is 14 years of age. She didn't even make the all-around, even though she tied Oksana Omelianchik for third place. That shows you how deep the Soviet team is. Now, she does a different approach to the board. She does a round off just before hitting the board and goes backwards to the horse. Layout full twist. An excellent ball. 
She needs also Shevchenko a 9.788. Now, our current leader, as we watch the replay of Shevchenko, is Joyce Wilborn of the United States with a 19.688. They both came in with 9-9. So in order to tie our current leader, Wilborn, Shevchenko needs a 9.788 average. Now keep in mind, both scores count on both of these faults, and she is going to perform a double-twisting souk. I think it's important to note here as well that a score of 19.688 is deceiving on the scoreboard because the score is actually 19.6875. Because they don't have enough places on the scoreboard, they're rounding it up to 19688. 9-9 on the first vault for Shevchenko. So if she comes close, she becomes the current leader. And she's going to do this double twist, I'll bet you. Don't you think, Cap? Oh, I'm sure she will. She it's does a this very vault risky vault. The same vault that she did in the last run, except this time she's going to crank one more twist in there. We saw her do it in the team competition, and it is unbelievable. She tied for second in the team competition. Oh, oh what a ball! And had no problems with the landing. Beautiful position. You know, it didn't seem to me like she got quite as good of a push as she did on the first vault because she was so anxious to get cranking on that double twist. She really didn't, and if you watch the landing, it's a little bit off one foot slightly in front of the other, but it's so quick that just, the judges won't really take off for that. We slowed it down and had trouble seeing it. <laughs> Look at that, nine nines across the board. <laughs> so she's got the nine nine that she needs, and she goes out in front for a total of 19.80. So she is the new leader with the nine nine average. 19.80 is her total. She's in first place. Yeah, the young lady you're looking at now is Chen Kui Ting. And she's from China. 15 years of age, had a 9.7 in the preliminary. Her team from China won the bronze in the team competition. And this is considered one of her better events. Which is interesting because in the past, the Chinese have been very weak on this event. They've improved so much, and it's partly in due to this new round-off vault. Layout photo. Oh. oh. The China doll, as we have affectionately called her the last couple of days. Everyone has fell in love with the young lady from China. Oh, that's so unfortunate. You know, she seemed to have everything going for her right here. She had good reach to the horse, fantastic push. I think she was trying too hard to stick it. She was going to put those feet back there and make sure she nailed the landing. We talked about how important it is that the gymnasts in the finals nail these landings. I think she put her feet a little too far back, trying to stick it too hard. She comes into the competition with a 9.7. Remember, Shevchenko is already through. She's in first place with a 19.8. Wilborn is in second with a 19.68. This is Kui Ting, Chen Kui Ting of China. She needed a 10 just to move into second place. And you see her scores coming up now on her first vault, and it's gonna be almost impossible, in fact, practically impossible for her to get that perfect hit. Her second vault coming up, 9.35, her first score. And the second vault forthcoming for Chen Kui Ting. She's four foot seven, 68 pounds. You see why we call her the China doll. Chen Cutie, I think, is uh, <laughs> rather appropriate. We don't know what her second vault's going to be. We've seen her do that vault. She just did for the first vault all week long. But in the finals, the gymnasts are required to do vaults of two different classes. Uh, and a tuck full twist. You just changed the body position a little. And still a little problem with the landing for Chen Kui Ting. She really doesn't have a second vault. She basically did the vault she did the first run, but this time she tucked it. And you can tell she's probably unprepared for the finals here because it would have been nice to do that in a layout position or with an, another twist, but certainly a different vault from the first one around. As you look at her, she finished sixth in the team competition. Going into the all-around, she moved up to fourth because the two Soviets couldn't even compete because of the country limit of three. She lost ground in the all-around, finished sixth. Well, she'll also compete later on on the balance beam here, but we await 
her second score. She got a 9.35 on her first score. Chen Kui Ting of China. Her team won the bronze medal in the team competition. We really saw a new philosophy with the Chinese gymnasts. In the past, they've been very flexible, elegant gymnasts, but not very strong. She shows a good balance between the elegance and the new strength that the Chinese are so trying to achieve. Do you remember, Shevchenko's in first, Wilborn is in second, and we still have Elena Shushinova coming up. And Elena comes in with a 9.95, the highest score of all the competitors in the vault. The second scores for Chen Kui Ting of China. And the judges having a little discussion over there on the sideline. There are six judges on the vault competition. I think part of the discussion here is that she made a mistake by doing basically the same vault as the second vault here, and the judges have to decide if they're going to make that deduction of not only was it not a perfect vault, but she did the vault of the same class that she did the first vault, and of course that should be a deduction. 9-4 is the low, 9-7 the high, with three nine sixes sandwiched in between as we look at some of the other judges. You're seeing here uh, Ludmila Tereshteva, otherwise known as the queen of gymnastics, a very top Soviet gymnast in the past. And she's That's working as a right. referee. She's helping arbitrate when there are conferences and when there are differences of opinion with the judges. 9.65 is now the final score on the second vault for Chen Kui Ting, averaging out to 9.50. As you look at the young lady from China, we'll continue with more Goodwill Games coverage in just a moment. We're going to go back live to gymnastics, and here's Charlie Neal. Thank you very much, Bob Neal. The young lady you're looking at on the vault is Wang Huying. She's from China. This is her first vault. Another layout, super hard with a full twist. A little bit of trouble on the landing. It almost was as if her legs gave out. I'm sure the girls are tired. They've been competing for three days in a row. She did an, a decent vault, a little off on the landing to one side, and of course that will be at least one-tenth of a point deduction. I think it's important to note that she did a layout Sukahara with a full twist. She did the same vault as Joyce Wilburn from the United States, but she didn't do it quite as well, and of course you can see in the score, the average will be 9.6. And she needs a 10 to move in the second place. That's where Joyce Wilburn is now, and it's going to be hard for her to get that. While we were away momentarily, Sidon from Romania scored a 9.6. She's currently in third place. Second vault for Wing Wang Huying of China. Layout Sukahara, one step on the landing. Again, that's a relatively simple vault. She did it well, but really not as well as Joyce did. And I think a good point you make here is that if you're going to do a simple vault, you better do it perfectly. She has nice position in the air, but she has to nail that landing if she wants the big score. 9.60 was her first score as we watch again. She winds up with a 9.70 on her second score. Of the eight gymnasts competing in the finals, she is one of three who are actually doing the traditional vaults of the, of the regular round off rather than the round off onto the board. So she has a 19.350. That moves her into third place right now behind Shevchenko, Wilborn, and Wang. But this is the young lady who is the favorite coming in. Helena Shushinova, Soviet Union, a 995 on the vault in the preliminary competition. And she is incredible on this event. She is so strong. Layout, full twist, <laughs> That's what we talk about when we talk about sticking a landing. We have to mention the fact that yesterday in the all-around, as we watch a replay, she finished the day with a 10 on this apparatus. The only weakness in this vault is she doesn't get the distance as some of the other vaulters get. She has a tremendous push here, and she really blocks right here. And, of course, that gets her way up in the air and allows her to just set the landing right in on top. She has a 10 on the board already today. It won't be perfect 10s. But uh, she's up there 
among the top 9.25, 9.925. She had a 9.95 coming in, a 10 in the all-around. So right now she's ready to take over first place. 9.85 average would give her first. Now on this second vault, if she could get more up on top of the horse, she could get a little more distance and maybe go for a 10. Oh, oh I, have to I have never seen that ball attempted before. And the crowd on hand really enjoying the work of the young Soviet. What's so difficult about that vault is the landing. Anytime you come in, it's a blind landing facing away from the horse. You can see she's going to do basically the same vault, the round off back hand spring on. Right here she cranks another half twist and she lands facing towards us. Here's another look at it hard to see from here how much distance she got off the horse, but it's such a difficult ball. And the scores reflect that she's going to move out in front, and I don't see anybody can catch her for all practical purposes. She's going to win the gold medal on the vaulting event, unless they change some scores here and really drop her down, and I don't see that happening. 9-9-0, her second score, and they combine the two. And that'll give her a 9913. And that score will total out to a 19.863. She's now in first place. Joyce Wilborn has a good chance of holding on to a bronze, though, right now. And he also does the traditional vault. Angela Dennis. She'll perform a square bow and a layout to Gohara. I'm not sure which one she's going to perform first. Angie is from Willingboro, New Jersey. It's a Cuervo vault. Oh. A little trouble on the landing. Had a 9.75 in the preliminary. She had the third best score coming in. You know, it's really unfortunate here because she gets really good height. But you'll notice she's lacking in rotation. This is a very difficult vault to rotate. Oh. It's too bad because she had great height and great distance. But you can see in this angle right here, she pushes off, does a half turn, and now she's going to pull a backflip. She is up there, but that's a lot of cranking to get all the way around, finish your rotation, in time to land. Now remember, Joyce Wilborn is in third place. She has a bronze right now. In order for Angie Dinkins, her country mate, to tie her, she would need a 9.9375. And I don't believe she's going to get it. You can tell there, of course. The scores in the first vault will hold her down. Bart, I think she was going for the stick as well. You could see how she opened up, trying to make that perfect landing. You know, as a matter of fact, I don't think anybody left in the competition. There's only one other girl besides Angie, uh, Gabriela Potorak from Romania, who has a shot at catching Joyce Wilburn. And as a matter of fact, I don't think even a perfect 10 would allow her to overtake Joyce Wilburn. Angie's second vault will be a layout Sukahar. She does this vault quite well. If she can stick. And Still a little low. Second ball. Had a 9.425 on the first one. She's 17 years of age. Has been on the national team the past two years. She actually did the vault quite well. But as she made the landing, the knees just bent way too far. Now you can see here again, she is really up in the air. Nice form. Perfect body position right here. She's hollowed out, but she's got to meet that floor a little harder if she's going to actually stick the landing. I mentioned she needed a 9.9375. She comes up with a 9.60 on her second vault. The average between the first vault, a 9.425, and a 9.60 is a 9.513. Not enough to move her into contention for a medal. So Dinkins now moves into sixth place, and we'll be back with more Goodwill Games coverage in just a moment. Stay with us. Along with Kathy Johnson and Bart Connor back here, the finals of the vault are already in, and the United States finally comes away with a gymnastics medal. Joyce Wilborn from Patterson, New Jersey, winds up with a bronze, while Elena Shushanova, which is not much of a surprise, walks away with a gold medal. Her country mate, Elena Shevchenko, comes away with a silver. Let's go back to our broadcast center and Bob Neal and Nick Charles.
And there are the standings, the final results in the women's gymnastics. Yelena Shushanova, the Soviet Union, and Joyce Wilborn did win the bronze for the United States. And that surprised some folks, but Joyce Wilburn came back with a strong performance despite a couple of problems with landings, but overall did pretty well. And with the dominance of the Soviet women, just to get into third place is certainly something that's worthwhile in this competition here. As Bart Connor said when he was on our late night program a couple of days ago, the Soviet gymnasts have proven in these goodwill games that in fact they have widened the gap between their performances in this sport and all the rest of the world, not just the United States, but Romania, China, Bulgaria, and all the other powers. Well, Paul Ryden has been doing some interesting reports for us. The Soviet system mandates some form of exercise for school children and encourages exercise in adults as a way of staying healthy. But if you thought that aerobics classes were something only Californians and stressed out New Yorkers subscribe to, then Paul Ryden's report will open your eyes. Soviet athletes in some sports have always excelled. There's a good reason since great attention has always been paid the athlete who can bring honor to the motherland along with that gold medal. But big time sport isn't the only game in town. Three, three, ras, va. It's exercise for the masses. It's on Soviet TV and lest you think this is the product of an active PR man's imagination, think again. Lilia Olenova runs a class in the heart of Moscow for regular folks. Muscovites who, we're told, were looking to the Soviet Sports Committee for a little attention. An athletic trickle-down theory, if you will, from the big-time athlete to the common man and woman. I'm fond of dancing, so that's here I can dance a little and I can just, um, I can be fit for dancing. And I like to dance at home, just uh, with my mirror. And so here I get a little training. And besides this, we are all of us are fond of our teacher. When our women are more ready, more strong, that is, in about four years, then we'll also be able to do stronger gymnastics. Now what many women have to do is lose excess weight, work on their flexibility. Then we'll be more prepared for stronger gymnastics with stronger stomachs and arms. Technically, the Soviets are running behind the U.S. in aerobic and fitness technique. The point is, they're doing something and enjoying it. Of course, one man's exercise is another man's agony. Working out isn't for everyone. But at least now, the point is, people have a choice to work out however they want to. For the Goodwill Games, I'm Paul Ryden. A little help. Charlie Neal, Kathy Johnson, Bart Connor back here at the Olympic Sports Complex as we continue our live coverage of the individual event finals and women's gymnastics. We just saw the vault. We saw Angie Dinkins also in that particular vault event of the United States. She finished seventh while Joyce Wilborn walked away with a bronze medal. It was the first medal the United States has earned in gymnastics competition here at the Goodwill Games. And now we're going to move our competition over to the uneven bars where, Kathy, the level of difficulty has increased considerably over the last few years. This event has really changed over the past few years. You'll notice that the bars are being put way out so that the girls can swing giant swings, major release moves like you see on men's high bar. It's become much more exciting. So far, the in the preliminary and team competition, the vault was the highest scoring event yet. The average score on the uneven bars coming in with the competitors we'll see. There are eight young ladies, a 9.75. How would you rank that? Well, it's a little bit harder in this event to get originality tents, and that's why the scores are a little bit lower in this event. But we're going to see some really good routines here. And, of course, Elena Shushinova in the team competition really nailed her exercise and scored the first perfect 10 of the complete gymnastics competition to that point. And also, besides Elena Shushinova, there's a young lady named Vera Kolesnikova who came in with a 9, who's coming into the competition with a 9.8, as is a young lady from North Korea, Chue Milian, who also had a 9.8. So this competition is going to be a little tight. Sure is. Kola Sneakova is really the surprise in this competition. She's not at all the top gymnast that the Soviets have, but she was just on yesterday. And I think as much of a surprise that Kola Sneakova was so awesome in her performance was the surprise that Shushanova actually had two major errors. All week long we have been 
really comparing her to Yuri Korlyov from the Soviet Union's men's team, who is also probably one of the stronger performers. I don't think the best gymnast from the Soviet team, but he was so consistent. Whereas Shushinova, we expected her to be very consistent, had two major mistakes in the individual all-around competition and virtually handed the title to Vera Kolesnikova. And it was ironic because Kolesnikova had to overcome a deficit of six-tenths in the all-around to win by .15, and she'll be the first young lady we'll be seeing here. We'll see her a couple times a day, in fact, and uh, she's a joy to watch also. Part It was just for that reason, her making those two mistakes, that I think Shushinova is really going to do well tonight. She has some added in incentive. You saw a couple of the women from the United States team. Well, I'll tell you, they do some, some real tricks here with cameras in the Soviet <laughs> Union, don't they? You don't know whether the gymnast is right side up or upside down. <laughs> and it's kind of hard to tell anyway, <laughs> even when there's really hard. So the, the warm-up continues for the uneven parallel bars. And this is Gabriela Patorak. We saw her in yesterday's individual competition on the balance beam and uh, she's an exciting little performer she does lots of difficulty but I don't believe she has the polish that we've seen from some of our Soviet champions well she's still very young Now talk a little bit about the building that we're uh, coming to you from we're live here it's called the indoor stadium this complex the Olympic sports complex built in 1980 and right across from where we're seated, uh, there's a movable partition. It's a soundproof partition that separates us from the boxing venue. Two events can take place at the same time right here. And they understand the width of the movable partition is 26 yards. So <laughs> you can, no wonder it's soundproof. Here's the young lady we were speaking of earlier. There's the partition there with the Moscow. 1986 sign. I don't know if it's exactly soundproof because there's been some pretty exciting <laughs> boxing going on and we've heard some cheering bleeding through that big wall. It certainly is. And in fact the finals of the boxing is getting ready to start over there momentarily as we speak. It's part of two arenas that we're sitting in here considered the most modern construction in the Soviet Union. Both halls have independent scoreboards. 16,000 can be seated in the arena in which we are in, the uh, gymnastics arena, and 17,000 across the way for boxing. Meanwhile, the first competitor in the uneven parallel bars is about to mount the apparatus. This is Vera Kolesnikova. Besides Sush Shushinova, the top Soviet performers on this event really had problems in the team competition, and therefore Kolesnikova finds herself tied for second going into this, her weakest event. But it surely didn't look like a weak event for her yesterday. Won the all-around. 9.8 was her preliminary score on the uneven bars. Setting up. A reverse hect, moving quite well. Now watch this next move. It's a reverse hect. She catches in mixed grip, half turn, and drops right to the low bar. It's a one and a half twist. Oh, nice combination to the low bar. She lost a little bit of form there on that twisting move. But other than that, she's working quite well. Double twisting flyaway. Good performance. Vera Kolesnikova. 17 years of age. She hails from the town of Voronezh in the Soviet Union. She's five foot three. She visited Florida this past spring, said she tried a little body surfing and really, really enjoyed it. Quite an athlete. Five feet three, and she looks like a giant out there compared to the rest of the she competitors. She is tall. Notice right here she does the reverse hect, sets herself up again when she kips to a handstand. Now she's going to do the same skill exactly. But as she re -grasps the bar, notice she's going to cross her arms right there and do a half turn and re-grasp. She says that her teammates are her strongest competitors, and they are good ones. There's that one and a half twist. You can see a little leg separation, but it won't be a major deduction. Didn't she do that move in competition, Kathy? I sure did. Oh, I don't think she did it half as well as that she did. That was a long time ago, Bart. Kathy, you haven't been retired that long. And a double twisting flyaway. 9.85, the score for Vera Kolesnikova on the uneven bars. So she's out in front now with a score of 19.650. Meanwhile, 
As we look at her right now, Vera Kolesnikova will also see her again on the beam. She says her idol is teammate Natalia Yurchenko. One of your favorites, too, Kathy. She sure is. Elena Shushinova, who won the gold on the vault. Now, she has the potential to score a 10 on this event. She had a 10 in the preliminary competition. It's a nice reverse heck. She's so strong. And a ginger, just like they do on men's high bar. All she needs is a 9.65 to take the lead away from Kolesnikova. And a half in, half out. Full oh, flipping go. That could be the other 10. <laughs> She doesn't even need a big score to retain the lead in this competition on the uneven bars, but we could have just seen a second perfect 10. There have only been three 10s in the competition. There were none in the men's competition, all of them in the women's competition. We saw two yesterday, and that young lady holds two of the 10s. And it's very conceivable if she gets a 10 here that she will have won the competition with a perfect 20 in the combined score of both performances. I don't know how you can beat anybody who gets a 20. <laughs> Especially when you don't have a 10 to, to work with to start out. Look at that, the height on the ginger. That's a back somersault with a half twist to regrasp. She is, she is like a machine on this event. She has a 310 showing on the scoreboard and three nine nines. Pretty good. I think she's gonna win it. <laughs> and a half in, half out. That's a full twisting double back. Six judges. Take the top and the low, throw them out, average the middle. In the middle four scores. Elena Shushinova. Had a 10 in the preliminaries, had a 9-9 nine, nine in the all-around. She finished second to Kolis Nikova in the all-arounds, who's the current leader. But uh, you have to think that that's only going to be for the next few seconds until they change the scoreboard. And then she's going to regain or re take the lead. It's, Any... import it's important to note right here that, oh, they ch did they change one of those scores? 9.95, and for all practical purposes, she has a goal because anything close to a 9.80 was going to give her a goal because of the scores of the other competitors. So a 19.950, and for all practical purposes, she is the winner of the uneven parallel bars. And for a tie, Shen Kui Ting will need a perfect 10. She is. Such beautiful line on her handstand. Oh, just a little loss of control there. To Delchev, she t makes the half turn and then does the front somersault to regress. Long jump from that low bar <laughs> to the high bar. <laughs> so she's only four feet seven and I think 64 pounds. And another half in, half out this mount. Chen Kui Ting, we saw her earlier on the vault. She came in with a 9.65, but she was going to need at least a 10 to tie for second. Look at the perfectly straight arms on her giant swings. Is that Delchev? Boy, that's a long reach down to that low bar. Sure is, but her, her height really comes in handy when she does the giant swings between the bars. She has a lot of room in there to swing. She's waiting for her score. We've noticed sparkles on her face the last couple of days. I don't see them today. Yeah, I think she left that <laughs> great makeup on. Huh? Score. Kathy made a good point about the straight arms on the giant swings. His excellent position in the whole exercise. And it's hard to believe that someone that little and that cute can actually be that powerful and that explosive. The score's not that great as far as her standings are concerned, especially with Chue Milian of North Korea coming up. 9.60 should be the average if you throw out the high and the low. And that would give her a 9.60 for a grand total of 19.250. She's now in third place. Remember, Shushinova has the goal. Kolesnikova right now is in second place, and here's... Chue Mo Yan, she has a chance 
to tie for second with a 9.85. She could tie Kolesnikova. A 9.9 would give her second place all alone. The North Koreans have really progressed in gymnastics. It's a Jaeger front. She's moving quite well so far. Free hip to handstand. Giant swing. And a heck back ah. somersault off. A little trouble on the landing there. She had the second highest score in the team competition. Came in with a 9.8 tied with Vera Kolesnikova, who's now in second place. That was Trey Milyan of North Korea. You know, I think it's important to note here that these girls do nice work, but it's different because now they do less transitional moves from the high bar to the low bar. Partly because the bars are so wide apart, the judges do require that they go from the high bar down to the low bar, and in many cases, a lot of these girls are doing what I would call token gymnastic skills here on the low bar just to fill the requirement so they can get back up to the high bar and do some of the big tricks. That's Kim Gumak, her teammate who is helping, who's getting ready for her uneven parallel bars, but the score coming up for Tue Milyan of North Korea. I said she needed a 9.85 to tie Kolesnikova for second. She may be in position for third place right now, which is held by Chen Kuiting, a 9.75. And Milyan of North Korea moves into third place behind Shushinova and Kolesnikova. And our Goodwill Games coverage will continue after this. We're watching the third day of women's gymnastics, and the central character in the play has been Yelena Shushanova, high and mighty, and as we're beginning to see here in the Goodwill Games, the best in the world. Shushanova won a gold on the first day of competition, took silver in the all-around, and today, a gold medal in the vault, and now closing in on gold in the uneven bars. Yelena won the world all-around championships last year. Now at age 17, she's imprinted her name indelibly on the long list of brilliant Soviet gymnasts. Yelena, who does not speak English, lives and trains in the Russian city of Leningrad. Here's our Goodwill profile. city in the world, in my opinion. It is very dear to me. I was born here. There are a lot of museums and theaters here. There are a lot of beautiful parks. The countryside is marvelous. The city itself is the history of Russia. When I have extra time, I like to go to the movies, and sometimes to the theater. came to our sports institute in 1976, a giggly, foolish little girl. She was a lively girl, but there was nothing special about her except for her level of energy. My parents took me to the gym for the first time to help burn off the excess energy. I was jumping from the bureau onto the bed all the time, and almost all the furniture was broken. Then I became very serious about gymnastics and worked out all the time and began to set goals for myself. Elena is different from other girls in that even when she is in a bad emotional state, she can overcome this and give 100% to her work. Some gymnasts have tremendous natural talent. This is not the case with Elena. Her secret has been a great deal of very hard work and this has led her to success. The fear factor is common to every normal human being, and therefore, one can say that she has it too. 
However, Elena is very intelligent, as well as emotionally stable, so she has the power to suppress her fears when fulfilling her most difficult routines. This is the source of all success, because when you take risks, you can fail, but at the same time, this is the only way to reach new heights in gymnastics. A gymnast's worth is measured by the continuing inclusion of new complex elements into her routine. She continues to perfect such elements, and I think this will take her to even greater heights. Columbia, Vancouver, and Expo 86, a spectacular national celebration where Canada will host the world. Five and a half months of entertainment, culture, and friendly people. Come to the province you've never seen. Come on! Come to a world so spectacular. Join us! Expo 86, Vancouver. Don't miss it for the world. Right now, we're going back to our live coverage of gymnastics. Thank you very much, Bob Neal. We're back here at the Olympic Sports Complex where the uneven parallel bars competition has just com been completed. And for the second straight event, the young lady from the Soviet Union, we just saw a profile on her, Elena Shushinova, winds up with a gold medal. She wound up with a goal on the vault. She gets a, a gold medal on the uneven bars. In second place with the silver medal, her teammate Kolesnikova, while the North Korean young lady, Chue, winds up with the bronze. And that's kind of a, a good omen for them. They came with only two people. They didn't even have a full team to compete in the team competition. As I said earlier, North Korea has really progressed in gymnastics. This is good proof of that. One exciting moment about to happen for the Americans right now is the award ceremonies taking place. And this... These are the competitors from the vault competition, the top three. There was Shevchenko, who's on the left, uh, on the, in the middle, rather. On the left is Elena Shushinova, the gold medalist. And on the extreme right, Joyce Wilborn from the United States. She picks up the first medal the Americans have earned in gymnastics competition. There's the gold medal winner, Elena Shushinova. Plains in Leningrad, as you saw in the profile, that we just saw in her moments ago. She scored. Shushinova. A 9.93. Shevchenko a 9.90. Joyce Wilborn a 9.788. On the vault. And the first medal for the United States a proud moment for the Americans and a lot of them in the stands here and they're very happy. You know, they have to be going wild back in Patterson, New Jersey because this is a wonderful moment for Joyce. She absolutely belongs to be up there on that third medal spot, even with the tough competition that was there. She is an outstanding vaulter. The United States in team competition finished fifth. Joyce was third among the Americans in the team competition, but she really has rallied and done a fantastic job and made America proud as far as gymnastics is concerned today. Awarding the medals right there is Nellie Kim. She's a top Soviet gymnast and just a crowd favorite. And world audience is all over. And she has been a judge here on the uh, vault the last couple of days. Her and Nadia Komenich. Here's the medal being awarded to Joyce Wilborn. Patterson, New Jersey. She's happy. She doesn't talk a lot, but I'll tell you, I'm sure the emotion is going through her right now. She's just kind of a shy young lady. What a thrill to, to receive your medal from a past Olympic medalist on the vault. Well, I'm sure you are very uh, familiar with this type of ceremony, Kathy. You've been in, in this situation, both you and Bart, many times before. As the coach of the Soviet Union, they also award the coach of the winning team or winning country a, a medal and a certificate. And there are the award ceremonies for the vault 
Again, Elena Shushinova of the Soviet Union gets the gold medal. Her teammate, Elena Shevchenko, the silver. Joyce Wilburn, the bronze. And now the Soviet national anthem. Again, congratulations to Shushinova, along with Chepchenko and Wilborn. And I'm sure the people up in North Jersey are having a good time right now celebrating the bronze medal by Joyce Wilborn. The, go ahead, Mark. At the beginning of the competition, we had predicted that we'd be hearing that Soviet national anthem <laughs> quite a few times. In fact, they have won every event in the men's and women's competition, and they only shared the gold medal one time with the Korean in men's gymnastics. But it sure is a proud moment to see an American flag up there on that podium. It certainly is. The first time in the gymnastics competition we've seen it. And we also expect to have the award ceremony for the uneven bars. Elena Shushinova again. She's going to be busy today. She's going to keep walking back and forth. She's not going to have time to get ready for her next routine. But uh, she wins the gold medal in the uneven bars, while Vera Kolesnikova, also of the Soviet Union, finishes with a silver. And the North Korean young lady, Choi Milyan, gets the bronze. And the three performers and the uneven bars about to approach the awards podium we've been getting a kick out of the translator here as she says when they present the awards they present the gold silver and bronze awards but at the same time they're giving all of the athletes gifts and the direct translation from the russian language is that they're giving them memorable prizes <laughs> as if the prizes the, wouldn't be memorable as if the medals are not enough right <laughs> But if they're giving some of ours in lacquer boxes, uh, Shushinova sure is going to have her share of them to bring home tonight. As they march in, Yelena Shushinova, Soviet Union. Two medals already, all gold. You hear the PA announcer. They announce both in American and in Soviet or Russian. Elena Shushinova, gold medalist, uneven bars. Vera Kolesnikova, 9.85 today on the uneven bars. Shushinova had a 9.95. Shushinova, of course, lost the all-around championship to Kolesnikova, so I think that she has a little element of revenge in her competition today as she has literally blown away the competition in the first two events that she's competed on, the Chui, vault and the uneven bars. Shui Mil Yan, North Korea, picks up the bronze. And there's a good shot of our memorable prizes. One of the young ladies that's part of the International Gymnastics Federation awarding the prizes and medals. That's Ellen Berger, and uh, she is head of the Women's Technical Committee in the FID and has been for many, many years. There's Vera Kolesnikova. And the last medal will go to Chue Milyan from North Korea. And it's got to be a good moment and a happy moment for the young lady from North Korea. He doesn't look too happy. Oh, there's the smile. Finally, it came up. Okay. Jue Milian of North Korea gets the bronze, and we'll be back with more Goodwill Games coverage after this.
As you can see from some of the wide camera shots at the indoor stadium out at the Olympic Sports Complex, the crowds have been ever increasing uh, for all the Goodwill Games competitions, really. They started off very sparse in some of the venues, as you well know, uh, causing some controversy, but a large crowd there for the women's gymnastics today. But there's good reason for that, Nick Charles, because it's something to see, particularly Yelena Shushanova. Regardless of what country uh, you, you, you're from, Bob, it doesn't matter. Naturally, this is the pro-Soviet crowd and its home field advantage, but Yelena, yeah, yeah, Yelena Shushanova didn't need any home uh, urging here. She is clearly the best in the world. She's two out of two so far, far tonight. Very original, extremely powerful, built a lot like Mary Lou Retton, but that's probably where the similarity ends. Uh, Yelena Shushanova is clearly um, the superior gymnast in the world today and probably would have won a gold medal it's, uh, had, they, uh, had the competition been comparable in 84. Of course, she was two years younger then, but... She is the best. Would have been interesting to see how Mary Lou Retton would have competed in this field. Uh, nobody knows because until they meet head to head, which is one of the reasons we had the Goodwill game. So we're glad we got a chance to see that. Congratulations, I know, are in order for Joyce Wilburn, the first gold, uh, first medal for a U.S. gymnast in this very tough competition. We'll be back in just a moment. Please stay with us as we continue coverage of the Goodwill Games. You're watching the Goodwill Games on the Sports Network. I'm at the Olympic Sports Complex. It's women's gymnastics, the individual event finals, and you're looking at some of the men and women's team from the United States, the Hayden Twins, Phil Cahoy, and some of the young ladies. Brian yeah. Babcock, Jennifer Say, Yolanda Mavity. A lot of Solomon. heavyweights here, aren't they? Not only from uh, the American team, but we've seen some of the top Russian and Soviet gymnasts uh, on hand at the competition here as we get ready for the third individual apparatus. They're warming up on the balance beam. This is competition three. This is the individual event that I find the, the most intriguing because the young ladies are working on a piece of wood that's only four inches wide. It's four feet high and 16 feet long. Kathy? This is really going to be a great competition. Right now we're watching 30-second warm-ups. That means each girl gets 30 seconds to try and warm up every skill in her balance beam routine. It's best to just get up there and try and learn to relax. And you know, at this event, there's a very strong point to be made for the Soviet domination of the whole sport of gymnastics, but particularly the balance beam event. The two Soviet girls coming into this competition, as you get a look of Nadia, at Nadia Komenich on the left there, Sharon Valley, our judges, and the beams comp, beam competition, that Shushanova has a 9.95, Koleznikova has a 9.9. .9. Now, there are six other gymnasts in the competition. All of their scores are only 9.45 to 9.6. They're way behind the two top. And just to make a point about what you were just saying, Bart Connor, in the team competition, we have two of the strongest Soviet gymnasts ever right here in the stands. This is Olga Bicharova, who was the world champion in 1981, and the 1983 world champion, Yurchenko, Natalia Yurchenko, from the Soviet Union. Both of these girls, world champions, and yet did not qualify for the final round of competition today. They're not good enough anymore. Not only Bicharova, but there's another young lady I was reading about, uh, Olga, well, that's Bicharova there. Uh, we saw her, I believe, in the United States in the in April in the competition Barak Sanova. Barak Sanova. That was another young lady I was trying to think of who did not make it. That shows you the depth of the Soviet team. But we were talking uh, a little bit before we recognized those young ladies, Bart, about the scores. And you were saying the two top scores in the competition are Soviets. Well... In the all around, in the team competition, there were five scores, only five scores over 9-7, and they all belong to the Soviets. Well, of all the events, though, this is where you can make up ground the easiest on balance beam. It's very easy to give away a tenth here, two tenths there, and some of the girls can stand and move up in the, in the standings. This has been, though, Kathy, the lowest scoring event of the four events in the women's competition. Why is that? That's unusual. Why is that? It's because that piece of equipment is 16 feet long, four <laughs> feet off the ground, and not quite four inches wide. Need I say more? <laughs> it's, well, it's very tough, and, and when there's a lot of pressure, it, it's, it's hard to just focus in on exactly what you want to do. If you'll remember, this is where Shushanova's problems began. Yesterday, yes. And we have been talking about Shushanova all along. She never makes mistakes. Well, she made two major ones 
in the individual all-around competition. I know she's really going to try and focus in on what she wants to do. There's another point to be made here as well, that normally the gymnasts, there are eight gymnasts in the competition in the finals. They are seated. The top four and the bottom four are draw at random, but at least the best gymnasts get to go up last. In this case, the top score, 9.95, Shushanova, is actually up first. And she had a 9.95, as you said. Third appearance for her today. She already has two gold medals, one in the vault, one in the uneven bars. Now, as I said, Shushanova can really be solid as a rock here. She had her problems yesterday, though, and it was on this pass coming up. Very difficult pass. Two layout step-outs in a row. Look at that. No problem. I think she's here to show the rest of the world that she is the top. Oh! Slight balance error there. I remember both of you saying that she looked a little tired when she made the mistakes in the all-around competition, but she's got a good night's rest last night. She still had two slight oh. bounce breaks. Can you believe that move? I mean, that is near madness. A full twisting back handspring swing down. There's not much room for error on that. We've seen the girls do that skill, but not with a full twist before. She's the first. Now, Shushanova doesn't have quite the grace and style as some of the other Soviet gymnasts on this event. But she makes up with it nerve. She's got nerves of steel. Her dismount. Round off. Double back. Fly hot. But I'm sure she's much much more pleased tonight. Yelena Shushanova, one of the four returning members of the Soviet team that won the world championship in Montreal last year. The other young ladies are Milianchik, Yurchenko, and Kolesnikova. Now here's a replay of that full twisting back handspring swing down right into a chest stand. She made a good point in her feature, in her profile, that talking about to be the best in the world, you have to challenge all of the new difficult moves. She certainly does that there. A 995 would assure her of a gold medal in this event. It's not gonna be a 995. 97 is the top, nine, uh, the bottom rather, 99 is the top. We'll await the average score from the six judges. She didn't look like she's too happy with the her performance there. We got the, the do have the low score of 9.7 there, so that may be the, the reason for the weight. Two 9.7s, a 9.8, and three 9.9s. But you have to understand that even though the scores are way up in the 9s, that these Soviet athletes are not pleased unless it's a perfect 10. She had a few balance breaks in there. So. Some of the East German women's team looking on. They look a little disinterested, actually, don't they? <laughs> Like, what are we going to need to do to beat these girls from the Soviet Union? Yelena Shushanova, two gold medals already today. She would like to pick up a third right here on the balance beam. But remember, Vera Kolesnikova, who comes into the competition with a 9.90, has still to do her routine. Again, we have that situation where the top scores are leading off an unusual circumstance in gymnastics. I think it's difficult for the judges as well. The first competitor out of the blocks, they're usually a little hesitant to throw the big scores, especially if the routine is that excellent because the judges want to hang on to those big scores in case there are some more outstanding performers later up in the rotation. And so they're well it? aware that Vera Kolesnikova is coming up. We saw a so shot of see? Vera Kolesnikova standing there looking at Elena Shushanova. So just like in the all-around competition it came down to a battle between the soviets as who was going to finish first or second well it's you know why are we having this problem again the nine seven nine nines the disparity in the scores well had she nailed a perfect routine I i'm sure the score would have gone right up but she did have those couple of balance breaks they're not quite sure what to do with it they still got seven other gymnasts to come. <laughs> That's but right. They know she's one of the top. And mm -hmm. the important point to make here is that the ju judging is subjective. So when there is a minor break in rhythm or a minor bobble in the exercises, the judges have an opportunity to take from one tenth of a point up to three tenths of a point. So some of these judges are more strict and they're taking a bigger deduction for a minor mistake. So I think that's where the controversy lies. I don't think it's a question of difficulty. It's more a question of execution. And that's a subjective thing. Number three, you see her standing, waiting 
patiently. That's Luo Fang. And it's just as hard for the next young lady standing around waiting to perform as it is for the young lady who's just performed because you're you're ready to go and all of a sudden you're 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 put on hold. <laughs> in fact, quite a few of us remember from the eighty four Olympics in Los Angeles that that actually happened to Julianne McNamara. She had to wait on the podium for how long, Kathy? Wasn't it almost ten minutes? Almost ten minutes waiting for the score. And I'm sure that that's when your nerves really start to build up. Because if you're actually ready to go, you step up there, you hate to have to wait. And it's probably worse on the uneven bars because the girls chalk down the bars. And uh, that's important that the chalk is there and you do your routine on chalking it down just before you go up there. Again, that's Luo Fang of China. Maybe, in her, maybe this is good for her. She's getting a little extra practice on the floor, doing a couple of full turns, <laughs> trying to stay loose. Let's look again at, as we are continue to wait the, the score for Yelena Shushinova right there. Uh, this is a replay. Here's the two layout step outs right in a row. That is a very difficult move. Two aerial moves in a row. And you saw the little break there. Nine, and seven, another seven. Little break here. Seven, seven, five. They finally come up with a score that gives her a total of 19.725. She is the current leader, but remember, Vera Kolesnikova, who also comes into the competition with a 9.9, .9, will be coming up. And we'll be back with more Goodwill Games coverage after this. Well, we've said it so much, you may be getting tired of hearing it, but it continues to be true. That is, the Soviet gymnasts are, in fact, dominant. Bart Connor was with us on our late-night program a couple of days ago, and he said he feels that the gap between the rest of the world gymnast, athletically, and the Soviet Union is growing even wider. Not so much that the U.S., East Germany, Bulgaria, Romania are doing poorly, including China, because as you can see, there's some pretty good gymnasts, but that the Soviet Union has simply really got it going. Finding and grooming young athletes for a career in gymnastics has become something of a science here in the Soviet Union. And one reason is not so much a state secret as it is just a well-established tradition of grassroots. It's not the facilities or the hope of great riches that draw Soviet children to gymnastics. But whatever the appeal, many start early and stay with it as long as their abilities permit. Access to good coaching and a vast network of gyms is part of the inalienable right of talented young athletes in the Soviet Union. Through the 15 republics, there is a system that identifies potential champions and encourages them through the ranks of local, city, and republic competitions until the weeding process has reduced this open-ended search to a handful of world-class gymnasts. The Soviets consistently produce a crop of internationally high-quality gymnasts due in part to the strong association in their country between sport and national pride. Here, athletics is thought to be a form of expression, not only personal, but also political. Our school perhaps is famous because our students won several medals in Olympic Games and in European and World Championships. The majority of coaches here are graduates of this school. And after attending the Institute of Sports, they come back because they're proud of the standards we have established here. Very important, when you have a one champion, champion of the town, this boy or this girl must be example for the other in this town. He went on to say, the champion of the Soviet Union is like a hero to all the other gymnasts. We try to spread such a champion's image to every corner of the Soviet Union. In our city, Vladimir, you might say gymnastics is in first place. We have a lot of youngsters involved, practically the whole city. And we give more time and attention to the ones that show promise. We have more good prospects coming along. They watch our champions, and I think we ought to be turning out more champions in the years to come. It's impossible to stop the creative process. The level of achievement will not just stop. 
If you invent something new, if you get a higher level of results, someone is sure to try and top you to invent something new. It would be gymnastics in the air. Now it is gymnastics on the apparatus. But it's more and more, it's go gymnastics like a flying exercising. Flying of the mind, flying of the heart, and flying of the body of the mess. So this is, a, I think, great uh, time for gymnastics, and I'm looking for the great success for the future. Live at the Olympic Sports Complex, and you're looking at Vera Kolosnikova. At a 9.90, she's getting ready to work on the balance beam, and she has a good chance of taking the gold medal away from Elena Shushinova. Elena had a 9.775, and she's currently the leader with a 19.725. But Kolosnikova, all she needs to tie for a gold medal is a 9.825, and that's where the story lies right now as the two Soviets continue to battle each other. Remember, Shushinova already has two gold medals in the competition, and here's Kolosnikova really hard to beat this girl on this event it's not that she's so spectacular she doesn't do that many hard tricks but she doesn't miss she is so solid on this event and actually this is the first time today that Shushinova has even opened the door for Kolesnikova to sneak Did in for a gold medal well they battled for the all-around yesterday and it was Kolesnikova who came out on top and now for the first time today she has a chance to take the goal away from her teammate once again. She did it in the all-around. The applause for the young lady you're watching. Kolesnikova. She had a 9-9 on the beam also in the team in the all-around competition yesterday. Now here's the hardest skill in her routine. Two back handsprings, lay out, step out. Not quite as perfect as it usually is. But the most they could take is one tenth of a point. Now the rest of her routine is, is actually very stock. She doesn't do too many more skills of value. And actually there she did just a back walkover, and that's unusual, really. Usually they do a back walkover into a layout backflip or a pike backflip. But fortunately for her, the name of the game is stay on and give no deductions. She has a nice, confident style here. But if I can be honest, uh, she's not doing anything. She's all over the beam. She's, she's not doing any acrobatic skills. She's doing pretty moves. But I don't think she's doing the big tricks that we saw Shushinova do. Here comes her big trick. She's setting up for her dismount. The only one done in this competition. Watch it. It's a triple twist. Oh. Perfect landing. <laughs> she saved the best for last. I think so. And look at the applause she gets from her teammates. Yelena Shushinova, they're battling for the gold and the silver right now, and maybe both will walk away with the gold. You never can tell. Well, she... by the book, there are no deductions there. She has her difficulty. She ends with a very difficult triple twist, and she does it better than anyone I've ever seen. You know, she only needs a 9.85 to take over the lead, and she had that little bobble earn the exercise, but with this outstanding triple twist, watch her finish one, two, three... And that is nailing a landing. I think she's going to get the big score. Because Shushinova only had a 9.775. She is in the lead with a 19.725 total. But Kolesnikova of the Soviet Union, you're watching her now, 17 years of age. You would think after all of this week's, week of competition that Shushinova ought to know not to open the door for Kolesnikova. <laughs> because once you do, boy, she's going to sneak in there. One mistake. And 
and she's anxiously awaiting the score. We have some preliminary scores up on the board. 9-9-0. That will just about wrap it up for Kola Sneakova to pick up the gold medal on the beam. And right now, Yelena Shusanova is looking at a silver. We'll be back with more Goodwill Games coverage after this. We'll return with more Turner Network Television Goodwill Games coverage after this from our local stations. Charlie Neal along with Kathy Johnson and Bart Connor. We're back here live at the Olympic Sports Complex. And let's watch a young lady from Bulgaria. Her name is Diana Dedeva. She comes into the competition with a 9.60, and she has a chance at a medal. She is one fiery competitor. She became the ace of Bulgarian gymnasts back in June, winning the national all-around title. Now here comes a very hard run. Back handspring, layout, layout. Little trouble with the landing, but she recovers quite well. Okay, Kathy, here's a quiz for you. Who does this girl remind you of? One of the famous American gymnasts from quite a few years back. That's easy. She reminds me of Rhonda Schwann. Rhonda was a top gymnast back around 78 and 79. She has the same fiery style, doesn't she? She sure does. Another slide balance break. She's really determined, though. She's not letting them go. We introduce the standing back pipe. Routine is a little stop and go, a little choppy. Doesn't quite have the flow that it should. Preparing for the dismount. She needs to stick. Double dismount. Very difficult off the balance beam. Had a little step. She needed a 9.65 to tie at least Luo Fang of China for a bronze medal. Luo Fang was in third place. So we'll await her score. That's Diana Dedeva of the of Bulgaria. A 9.60 coming in, and here we are getting ready for our next event, our final event, which is the floor exercise. Meanwhile, the scores after the balance beam competition are now final. Vera Kolesnikova of the Soviet Union walks away with the goal to go with the silver that she earned on the bars, while Yelena Shushinova picks up the silver to go with the two goals she's already earned. Diana Dedeva, the young lady we just saw from Bulgaria, wins a bronze, the second medal that the Bulgarians have won in the gymnastics women's competition. They won a silver in team's competition. And we'll be back with more Goodwill Games coverage after this. Turner Network Television Goodwill Games coverage continues after this short break. Okay, thank you very much, Bob. I heard you say they had a flower named after. Maybe we can send a dozen Kolesnikovas to our favorite young lady. <laughs> We're getting ready for the final event in the individual apparatus finals. The floor exercise. They'll be working on this carpet we have grown to love. It's 40 by 40 feet. <laughs> and our first young lady that we'll see is from the United States, Hope Spivey. Hope scored a 9.70 in the preliminary competition. There she is. And she is a funky little competitor. She lives in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Four foot eight, 81 pounds. She's 14 years of, of age. She says her idol is a young lady she's going to be competing with in this floor exercise, Oksana Omelianchik. And uh, she'll be right behind Hope, in fact. And she says that the Soviets taught her how to discipline themselves. And when they were touring this past spring, she got a chance to meet the Soviets and get to know them pretty well. Hope Spivey from Allentown, Pennsylvania. One of the greatest qualities that she has as a gymnast is that she's very spunky. And you notice that from the Soviet gymnasts. That's the style of the leading gymnast these days, is very spunky, light, high approach to the sport. She finished second in the all-arounds recently at the Nationals. 
so many years in the past we've had gymnasts who have won with a very stern, disciplined look. But she's fun to watch. Comes in with a 9-7. Hope Spivey. Look at the look in her eyes. I think she's going to go after it. The first tumbling run. Full twisting double back. Perfect for it. Builds excitement. Here comes that middle run. Front tuck due to a double twist. A little change of pace. run and a double tuck perfect landing you couldn't ask for any better hopes by the allentown pennsylvania what a great exercise every tumbling one was right on this is probably going to be the toughest competition that we've seen so far because of such great talent working on the floor exercise and we have a couple nine nines as we look at part of hope's routine she has a lot of speed and power in her tumbling see it right here she takes off does a full twist on the first somersault and then does another back somersault what a great landing here she is This is her coach right here, Donna Strauss. She's also the assistant coach for the United States team here. Hope seems to be a little happy with her routine, and she has every reason to be. She came in with a 9.70. Here's the last tumbling run. This is a very difficult tumbling run. A double back, she gets tremendous height, perfect position. And the best part about it is that she really knows how to pull the rotation around so that she lands right on top of it. Excellent work. Again, the score are a little slow. We've talked about that all week, as a matter of fact, that uh, rather than having the usual FIG internationally rated judges at this competition, we actually have some new judges. In fact, we've seen face, their faces. Nadia Komenich is judging Nelly Kim uh, from the men's competition, Alexander Dityatin and Alexei uh, uh, Tukachev. So we have some of the famous gymnasts are actually coming in back to the sport and helping judge. So in other words, we're not only grooming new gymnasts, we're grooming new judges as well. <laughs> and they're holding us up. <laughs> the new gymnasts. But I guess it is hard, making up your mind, watching such great routines time after time. And especially, it seems that uh, the, a lot of the problems occur with the first gymnast. Even though Hope did not come in with, let's say, the highest score in the competition, but the first competitors on each apparatus seem to be the ones that we find the hardest. Even the crowd is starting to get into it a little bit now. Hope Spivey anxiously awaiting the score. It is tough to go first. The judges really scrutinize that first routine out. Because they know they have some heavy hitters coming up, like Oksana Omelianchik, who we spoke of earlier. Here come the score on Hope Spivey. Also, Joyce Wilborn of the United States will be in this competition. Marilla Sidon, Elena Shushanova, and she comes up with a 9.75 average if you throw out the top and the bottom scores. And they don't seem to be able to even agree on that. <laughs> we can do it quicker than they can. Here once again is the full twisting double back at the top of the exercise. Now they've given her a 9-9 nine, nine by one judge, and it's still 9.775. So that's not a bad score for Hope Spivey. 
She finished uh, with a 9.70 in the preliminary and a 9.70 in the all-around. So she finishes with a total of 19.475. Oak Spivey, but Oksana Omelianchik, who you're going to love this routine, I'm sure. Just watch. She's a joy. She is one of my favorite gymnasts, and in particular on this event. Listen to the music. We've heard it for the last couple of days, and we've enjoyed it every time. And I never get tired of it. Here's her first tumbling run. It's full in, back pike, and she tumbles out of it. First of all, that's such a difficult tumbling run, but to tumble out of it. She had a 10 on the floor yesterday. Now watch the facial expression here. She is just delightful. Second run. Watch this double twist punch front. She's going to tumble back in the other direction. Round off one and a half twisting dive roll. She's the favorite coming in right now. Of course, Shushanova's a force always to be reckoned with. This routine just doesn't stop. You have got to be in top shape to do this routine. tumbling run and a double pike tumbles out of it as well <laughs> oh oh my she has everything oh my Leantic. Soviet Union 16 years of age 4 foot 8 73 pounds and she's happy <laughs> she, she scored a 10 the, yesterday and she I waves think... to the crowd as she goes off let's watch it once again here's her full twisting double back she does it in pike position. Now watch here. She lands and keeps right on moving out of it. A back handspring. She that actually was a little lower on that than she was in yesterday's competition. She was, but it, she sure covered it well. She had a 10 in the floor exercise in the all-around competition. She finished third in the all-around. In fact, she finished third in the team competition because of people like Shushanova and Kalisnikova ahead of her. She had a 9-9-0 in the team competition, and a 10 today would assure her a goal. Now, how about the judges today as opposed to the other days that she did this routine? We've That's added a couple, number one. We've added a couple, and of course, we have different judges on different events. So these judges have not seen this performance all week long. Nine nines for five judges, a ten for one other judge. Let's see if they bring that ten down or bring up a nine nine five. But anyway, a nine nine is her average score right, right, right now. And that's what she came into the competition with. So right now, she is our current leader. This is Omelianchik with a 19.80. Joyce Wilborn of the United States is on deck. She would have to have a perfect 10 to tie for first. She comes in with a 9.8. Joyce has been near perfect in the last two days of competition on this event. Every time we pass, it's been right on. A 9.675 would tie her for second right now with Hope Spivey. I'm sure her heart's pounding right about now. She already has a bronze medal. She picked that up on the vault. The Soviet audience really likes her here, though. They get into this music. Oh, a major mistake there. Looks like she stepped right out of bounds. Yeah, I saw one of the judges raise the red flag, which means that she will get a tenth of a point deduction for stepping out of bounds. Too bad, because it was a great start to that exercise. The second tumbling run. High double twist. It's actually a very easy middle tumbling run, but she does it so well. Oh. All right. A little bit of America. <laughs> There's no question where she's from. Comes a nice triple turn. Joyce has really worked hard on her dance elements. She's always been a strong tumbler. 
Last time we ran, a full in back out. Perfect landing. And she's going to get a minor deduction for that stepping out of bounds. We saw the flag go up on her. But other than that... Other she, than that, it was beautiful. It's only one-tenth of a point for stepping out of bounds. And she could wind up with another, maybe a 9-8. We'll see what happens, Kathy. Now, Joyce, as I said, has really worked on her weaknesses. One of them is flexibility. Now, here we're looking at her first tumbling run. Is that full in, back out. Now, you'll see right here she over-rotates just a little bit, steps back, and just an inch out of bounds. She's really worked hard, though, on her weaknesses, her dance and her flexibility. And uh, I spoke to her earlier, and she was telling me how she goes about doing that. Well, I do, for my right leg split, which I have to get all the way down in a 180-degree split, I have to put weights on my legs and sit in between two mats for at least five minutes so I can go down further. The scores are up for Joyce Wilborn. And that average is out to a 9-9. I'll tell you, if that holds up, you think they're a little generous? No, I think, no. you know, it's a perfect Even exercise, though... except for the step out of bounds. But what they're going to do is take one-tenth of a point off that. The score was actually 9.875 average. They're going to take one-tenth of a point off because going out of bounds. So 9.775. We're looking at Morella Slidon. She's from Romania, coming in with a 9.750. Now, the Romanians really sent a young team here. This is their top junior team. They're very young and inexperienced, but they've got some good stuff, too. She cannot get a first place. She needs a 9.85 to tie for second with Joyce Wilborn. A double layout. Wow, what a great start. She Maybe can't be more than four, four feet three inches tall, and that was probably six feet in the air. And you mentioned inexperience in terms of international competition, but certainly the level is outrageous. Front pike step out, through to a double tuck, a little short on the landing, but a tough pass. As always, the Romanians have very unique floor routines, including the music. 9.725 would tie her for third place with Hope Spivey. She did a 9.825 to tie Joyce Wilborn for second. Now watch this first pass. The height she gets off the floor. The second somersault actually is higher than the first. Double layout. She lands it perfectly. The score is coming up pretty quickly right now on Sidon from Romania. The judges... I only saw that one problem. She landed a little short on the middle tumbling run. 9.875, so she has moved into second place ahead of Joyce Wilborn of the United States. And more Goodwill Games coverage will continue right after this. Flex, the final event in the women's individual event finals. And it's the floor they're working on as you look at Yelena Shushanova. And she comes into the competition with a 9.90. She's already picked up three medals today, a silver and two golds. As you look at the United States team looking on, meanwhile, the story is the battle for first place between Shushanova and Kalis Nikova. I make that Omelianchik, rather, even though they thought Kalis Nikova's been battling all day. That name just happens to stick. But uh, also, the battle for third place is going on right now. Joyce Wilborn 
may be moved out depending on the performance by this young lady, Yelena Shushinova, out of third. Saidan of Romania is in second. Wilborn is in third, but Shushinova has yet to perform. Omiliancic holding down the top spot right now. She had a 9-9-0. Shushinova needs a 9-9-0 to tie, a 9-9-2-5 to win the goal outright. And this routine is stocked full of difficulty. This first tumbling run, where she had problems in the all-around competition, landed a little short. Pulling back out. She didn't do the double layout. Probably a smart move. Comes a very difficult pass. somersault. Think she knows what she has to do? <laughs> I'm sure she does, but I'll tell you what, she's being a little conservative, actually. She usually performs a double layout at the opening. She did a full end, which is still very difficult. Yeah, I think the point to be made here is that she can do every trick in the book, so any day, just decide, well, I think I'll do the full end today instead of the layout double back. You know, she had only a 9.40 on the floor in the all-arounds, and she made a mistake, which eventually hurt her. Tuck. Eventually hurt her for the all-around title, but uh, she's working hard and performing well today. No yeah. problem. <laughs> Yelena Shishinova. She already has a team goal, a silver from the all-around, a vault goal, a goal on the bars, and a silver on the balance beam. You can see here... As she takes off on this side one and three, she's up in the air. She's going to straddle, do a one and three quarter front flip there, duck her head under, and roll out. You know, she won a silver medal in this event at the World Championships last year. You know who won the gold? Omelianchik. Omelianchik. So th <laughs> this is maybe sweet revenge for Shushinova. It's so hard to compare these two gymnasts. I think she's doing something very smart, though, in a way. Is that You mentioned that she might be going a little conservative. Well, according to the way the judges have been going here today, you can't leave any room for deductions. Well, I think she decided that was the smart way to go. Go I clean. I think she just got the goal. <laughs> and looking at the scores that are coming up across the way, she sees them. She's happy. 9, 9, 10, 9, 9, and 3, 10. She has 4, 10s, and 2, 9, 9. A 9, 9, 2, 5 would give her the goal outright. And they're waiting to average it. The top and the bottom. There she is. She has to be happy with her performance. She's looking for another goal. It would be her third of the day. A 9-9-7-5. She just wrapped it up. And there's Omiliancic, who will walk away with the silver medal right now. And we'll be back with more Goodwill Games coverage in just a moment. So many. Nova, you saw just won the gold in the floor exercises, and Vera Kolishnikova, who last night won the gold in the individual all-around, and last night, as I told you, the Soviet Union uh, named a flower after Vera Kolishnikova. Uh, also last night, after winning that women's all-around, Mr. Donald Kendall, the chairman of Pepsi-Cola, had a special award for her. Let's look. And now Pepsi-Cola has the pleasure of presenting an award to the outstanding gymnast of this event. And it's a beautiful Russian lady, which is a symbol of a Russian fairy tale of grace and beauty. And what could be more fitting to present to Vera Kolesnova than this beautiful trophy? Vera Kolishnikova, what a performer. We'll be right back.
Mark Tiamoff is such an elegant swinger. Beautiful giant swing, both backward and frontward, and a nice laid out double to ask. We saw him in the all around competition in which he won a bronze medal, but behind his countrymen, Korolev and McGilney, as you see some of the rhythmic gymnasts warming up along the sideline, and we look at part of Artyomov's routine again. There's a beautiful inverted iron cross. Whip it to an L. Yolanda Mavity of the United States getting ready to work on the uneven bars. This exhibition is really a great opportunity for Yolanda. She was our alternate for this competition, so she didn't get to compete. She'll get this chance to perform in front of the Soviet crowd. The Delta. Stalder to handstand. Giant swing. And the dismount, front with a half. Oh, very nice. Yolanda Mavity. Terezinko and Stepchenkov of the Soviet Union acrobats. Чемпионка мира в командном перед... 